Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Alan Barnard. I'm CEO of Golded Research Labs. Uh, my co-presenter this morning is Manuar Madira from Microsoft. And we have the honor of presenting to you a case study, a TOC-based supply chain solution implementation that has been done at Microsoft over the last uh, 18 months. I'll hand over uh, to Manuar. So first, let's get the white elephant out, out of the room. Let's talk about why does Microsoft, which is known in the world for Windows, Office, Azure, Bing, why does it need a supply chain? What does software have to do with the supply chain? And it might be a surprise to many of you that Microsoft has been in the hardware business since the 80s. And believe it or not, it used to produce some enhancements cards, performance enhancers for the Apple. Today, we have a whole line of Surface products here from uh, multiple form factors, Surface Pro, Book, and the Studio. We have the Surface Laptop that was recently launched and the Surface Hub. Apart from our Xbox family, we had augmented reality products like HoloLens and in the field of mass customization, custom controllers. So Microsoft supply chain, let's just took, look at the numbers. We have the whole uh, process from new product introduction to sourcing, planning, manufacturing, checking for quality, compliance, and finally the uh, global supply chain, ensuring that the product reaches uh, to all corners of the world and the care, which is the support and uh, how we service our devices. We have over 290 million units shipped every year with 31,000 active SKUs, about $11 billion in the amount of annual spend on our uh, inventories, and more than 600 suppliers. And we have over 30,000 outlets uh, through which we serve them, which is including our uh, carriers, retailers, and uh, the MS stores. So before we jump into what our journey was and what we, uh, what we had seen, let's take a look at the results that uh, we received. Our uh, Chief Technology Officer, Robert Meshew, uh, he could not be here uh, with us today uh, due to prior engagement, but he's here on video sharing his thoughts. Washington. My name is Robert Meshew. I'm Chief Technology Officer of Microsoft Supply Chain, responsible for everything from how we source product uh, all the way through how we take care of customers uh, if they have any sort of problem running the technology, the prioritization of all those programs. Um, and I'm faced with a lot of challenges. And about a year and a half ago, we were faced with uh, increasing supply chain complexity, uh, a rising inventory levels, increased number of markdowns, and a lot of demand variability, especially as we introduce new product categories such as HoloLens or Surface 2-in-1s. So we reached out to Goldrat Labs to really help us think through uh, some of the nuances of the problem. And through that work, we were able to implement a new TOC planning model in our existing execution uh, and supply chain systems. Um, the outcome has been nothing short of remarkable. Uh, in that time, we've seen our service levels rise to our customers by a little over 5%. At the same time, we've seen our inventory levels drop by a quarter of a billion dollars uh, across the board which has led to reduced markdowns and reduced excess and obsolescence of about $100 million. So certainly everyone over here at Microsoft has moved from theory of constraints being just a theory to TOC actually being a reality, a reality that has really driven our business to a place that, that it wasn't before. So uh, with that, I hope you guys all have a great conference and Goodbye from Sunny Redmond. So as Robert had mentioned, we had uh, working capital savings uh, of about $250 million. And one of the things that he did not mention is our inventory turns. We have had our highest inventory turns at Microsoft ever since we have gone live with the uh, uh, business adoption of our uh, solutions here. So we went live with most of the products in uh, September. And we have uh, seen a consistent 17.1 uh, inventory turns uh, in the last two quarters. In terms of the solution design is you don't know when the opportunity will come up to present to leadership about some possible solutions. But it led to 
a 30 minute conversation with Shane uh, Kolar, who is our senior director of uh, planning at the time, and how we could offer, how TOC could offer a different solution. And that then le led to an email from me to Alan and said, hey, Alan, are you in town? And of course, just like Alan is somewhere around the globe at any, at any given time, he said, yeah, I'm in the US, I can show up next week. Uh, August 26th, he came in, had a first uh, workshop with our CTO, and so we had a lot of senior leadership present in that particular uh, meeting. And then from the 28th through the 13th, we worked offline uh, with trying to create a good simulator with the analysis of the current data, so we can make a business case of how it could benefit. And lastly, then September 4th, we went into a technical solution design workshop from about, in the September about two, three days. And with all the resources that we had from SAP expertise, from uh, Illumity, and then other people from uh, Goldrat Research, and our own planning and IT teams, all in, the, all in the workshop together of three days. And we had a direction of solution ready. Of course, we are constantly uh, testing and the simulation. And we were developing this uh, software in the SAP, the modification that we would need to make in SAP during the time between September to December. And we had, on December 16th, we had the first go live uh, of the system changes. So I'll let Alan walk you uh, through the uh, solution design elements. Thank you, Manoar. So we've used a technique that is uh, commonly used in, in theory of constraints called the strategy and tactic tree. And we've used that to develop the logic around what the, the, the design should look like. So at the top of this tree is that there is a successful implementation of the one DSC initiative at Microsoft, essentially one simple Microsoft for managing supply chains. In order to build a competitive edge around your supply chain performance, the first key requirement was to develop a, a dynamic simulation model. As Manuar pointed out, we had two weeks to, to do that using actual data from, in, in their case, their distribution centers and actual customers to see if we implemented the, the theory of constraints based rules for sizing buffers, replenishing buffers, as well as resizing buffers, whether we can actually substantially improve on the current level of shortages and surpluses. The strategy and tactic tree was used to clearly define what the objective of each of those changes were, exactly how the rule will work, and what are all the assumptions that we've made about why this change in rules are needed and why the tactic that we've selected is the best way of doing it. And in the tactic side, we then uh, took responsibility for producing graphical pictures of how that rule should work. This was presented to the SAP teams in rapid prototyping workshops so that they can fully understand exactly how the rule would work. They were given the opportunity to ask any questions that they might have if there was confusion exactly how the rule will work or could work in special circumstances. And then finally, they would come back with a design in the SAP. Uh, we have done a number of implementations of TOC and SAP, so our team from Golden Research Labs and Illumity could offer some advice about what is the simplest possible way of implementing these theory of constraints rules within standard SAP. The simulation model was essentially used for three purposes. The first one was to answer the very simple question about is it possible to do significantly better not just in terms of operational performance, but also in financial performance. The model we built was a model that is completely self-configurable from data that can typically be read in via an export or a query run out of an ERP system like SAP. So if you look on the slide, we have data that we are reading in that are coming directly from SAP through SQL into an Excel template that we've created. And this data describes the full supply chain. And then lastly, we read in the demand, both the forecasted demand of what the forecasts were at that time, as well as the actual customer orders that were coming in. This information then goes into the model. We want to be able to press the play button 
and see if by following the new TOC rules, we could have done better than what had happened in the past. So the, the, the data that was read in about the actual stock level by SKU, by location for every day over maybe the last 12 months was used as the baseline. We were used the simulation model to model every single event in that supply chain over that period of time, but now reacting according to the TOC rules that are completely automated in the model to see if we could have uh, achieved lower levels of shortages and surpluses and faster responsiveness when there are critical events like unplanned downtime. Inside of the model itself, you can see graphs and statistics while the models are running. You can see entities moving. You can see trains and trucks and ships moving and products moving. But you can also get Excel reports and then uh, logs where every single event is, is logged. When you open up the model, uh, it gives you an opportunity to upload a data file, and that data file then will de de determine how complex the model is. The user interface was purposefully kept extremely simple. They simply open up an Excel file. Once they've done that, the, the Excel file then reads in, and the model then gives a summary of what data we have read in. And then the last section is this is where you can select the type of run that you want to do. Do you want to do a single experiment run, sensitivity analysis on any of the parameters, uh, or a scenario comparison? You might be wondering, how did we achieve this very fast implementation in SAP while we were still testing whether these rules will really get the expected results? What we did was we identified the structure of the rule that are very generic. And parameterized that rule, so the structure of the rule was implemented in SAP, keeping the parameters as variables that can be modified by the supply chain planners. And we used the simulation model to identify w what those parameters should be. As Manoar said, we were surprised, ple pleasantly surprised, to see how robust the standard default settings are that we are using with inferior of constraints in our standard rules. But there were cases, as he mentioned, like the Xbox, where the standard parameters didn't perform well, and we could do sensitivity analysis to see if we can fix the problem just by changing the parameters, or in the case of a hybrid rule, that we actually had to create a completely new rule. When you click on map, it quickly shows the user what the supply chain looks like that was read in. The final side is when you've run the model, and I'll do a, a quick live demonstration now so you can see it in action, is to get an output. And the, the main two graphs that you see on the screen at the moment, the purple lines are indicating what the actual stock levels were during that time period. In this case, you can see during major parts of the year, the, the TOC stock levels were predicting to have almost half the stock than normal. And it showed that it would have been possible to reduce the stock while at the same time almost eliminating completely un <coughs> unsatisfied demand. You can also zoom in to a specific distribution center. And these colors are, sh are representing each product within that distribution center. The bottom charts with the colors are showing what the actual stock levels were and the percentage of time it spent in the various buffers. So you can see a lot of blues there, which means that you were carrying too much stock. But you can also see some blacks, which means that you were, at the same time as carrying a lot of stock in some areas, you were stocking out in others. The chart on the top side is showing you what the buffer stock levels would have looked like if you were using the standard TOC rules. And you can see there are some items that, that have significant reds, but uh, almost no blacks. And quite few blues. And then lastly, you can zoom into a specific item in that distribution center and again see the purple line representing the actual stock on hand that was happening and the blue lines presenting the stock on hand that would have been if we had been using the TOC rule in fully automatic mode. As you could see uh, from Alan's simulation, uh, that simulation model was crucial for us to A, check the rules, get the buy-ins that are needed. Simulation tools, though, are very effective in decision making, especially when you have varied boundary conditions across product lines and so on. And as we said, 
that also helped us identify any gaps about, hey, if, would this rule work? Or more importantly, what new rule should be introduced? Last one, SAP is more flexible than it's normally given credit for. Uh, we found that true both in terms of uh, the software itself, where we could tweak it with some uh, smaller tweaks in to adjust to what it is uh, required to implement TOC. Don't think that it is very difficult to implement in an ERP system. It is possible and it can be done. As I had mentioned, we have done some uh, implementations or adaptations into our finished goods. We need to expand that into our component purchases and where we are seeing uh, uh, some opportunity. We are also expanding that into uh, our exchange and B SKUs, where uh, we keep the stock for anticipated repairs and how do we and how do we keep the quantities, right quantities in stock without having to carry 15, 16 weeks of inventory in. And in closing, I'd leave I'd uh, like to leave you all with a uh, closing thought. To change large organizations, you need not always be the top guy to uh, come up with the idea. And I think that's a, that's a great point to close off the implementation, is that this was a, an excellent example of how things can be done bottom up. We got the approval from the senior executive team to say that this is what we are planning to do. We used the models to predict what the likely impact was going to be. We implemented it within the existing uh, SAP system, ran proof of concept pilots to, to learn very fast what was working, what, was, what wasn't working, and then only rolled it out once we were absolutely convinced that the results were there.